Hello people, my name is Nathan Hopkins. This is the house that Russ built. We'd like to welcome to our channel. It's brought to you by Ten Man Customs of North Carolina. We want to show you a better way to cut the frames on these trucks that are, is also a safer way and put them back together. We also want to show you a faster and better way to put the beds back together without warping them. We, uh, we found a very good method for doing this and we'd like to share it with people. Thank you. Okay, folks, what we have here is a 72 Ford long bed that's going to be converted into a short bed. We're going to try to show you the proper way of doing it. There are a lot of other shows out there that are showing how to do it, but they're doing it a lot harder way than what we figured out to do. So we thought we'd show our way of doing it. Welcome to the house that Rust built. What we're doing here is that what they call is a Z cut or a step cut. Taking 16 inches out of the middle and four inches out of the back. On the back, all you do is lop it off square and redrill your holes. If you do a straight cut in the middle, you lend yourself to the potential of uh, making a place it can crack. A Z-cut makes a place where a crack, if it ever got into the frame, will stop. What I usually do whenever I'm doing multiples of a project is I make a template. Made one off the last one I cut. When we're done, we'll plate it on the inside and the outside of the frame, or box it on the inside and plate it on the outside. Makes it a place where it should never crack. I always take the time to put the front half of the truck on jack stands and level the truck. If it's not level now, it won't be level when you weld it. We've got the frame lined up, squared up, and tacked together now. This is what it should look like. We've got it within a few points on our level, which is close enough for these old trucks. As you see down here at the bottom, the, the bottom doesn't line up perfectly. I've seen a lot of other people run into the same issue. You can either split the frame there and bring it up, or you can use the heat from when you're welding to, to bring it up. Do not, I've seen a lot of guys leave the discrepancy at the top. The top needs to be level, needs to be true. We'll come back to you in just a few minutes after we've got it welded. Okay, folks, we're back again. We've got this thing welded up, trued up, squared up. And it's within a sixteenth of an inch of being uh, square. I figure that's pretty good. We're going to start here in a minute cutting our side plates. Which will grind our outer welds. We also did an extra inner weld on both sides. Here's our plate we're gonna do our, our side plates, fish plates out of, quarter inch steel. We'll show that here in just a little bit. Okay, folks, this is how I play the frame. You should never use a flat corner. See how all of my edges are rounded. Anytime you do a point or a square corner on a plate, you potential make another potential place for a uh, area to crack. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our old pieces out of the frame rails we cut out and use them to box the frame on the inside. This will make this frame way stronger than it ever has to be. I'll walk over to the other side and show you the other side where I plated it. This frame should never go anywhere. Okay, people, we're back. This is the next day. We're getting into cutting the bed now. 
A lot of people want to cut in line with the brace that runs right down through here. It's a lot easier. I mean, a lot easier if you'll step your cuts over. And I don't mean a lot easier during the cutting process. I mean a lot easier during the welding process. If you weld this bed, say right where that yellow line is right there, then you greatly increased your potential for warpage. But if you'll bring it all the way over to two inches off the front of the bed and step around the uh, stake pocket, it will make life so much easier to put this bed back together and make body work a whole lot easier. And the easiest way, and I'll show in just a little bit when the bed dries out enough that I can make my marks. Everybody wants to cut down the center of that bed. Well, that means that you have to weld that bed solid all the way down. But if you'll just measure 16 inches back from the headache rack and cut it and then flip the bed up and drill the brace out, which is not that hard to do if you have some okay bits, then you can uh, save yourself a whole lot of work because then all you do is go in between each one of these, these ribs right here and drill a plug weld hole. Well, actually two of them, I guess and weld that back in and then all you're doing through that whole system is weld those plug welds back in. Now you have to do a little step work on the inside of the bed there too because you want to save that factory plug hole for where the uh, chrome molding goes on. But it's still not that bad. You wind up with the minimum amount of seams to have to weld. The same thing on the back. Everybody wants to do the same thing. You can see in this bed where we've got a little bit of rust issue where that brace is. We're gonna actually cut this one where the brace is in the center, but everything else we're gonna cut stepped backwards. We went one inch off the factory seam to leave enough of an edge to weld to. We're not lap welding anything, we are butt welding every seam on this thing. If you take your time, they'll not be able to tell it from the inside or the out. I've, had, I've done one other truck like this and a aficionado of the uh, 60s era trucks looked at the thing for two hours before he ever noticed that it was a long bed originally. And the only thing it gave it away was that stake pocket. We did the same thing on this side. We stepped, stepped back two and a half inches off the front of the bed, made our line measured 16, did that, and then up here at the top, we measured one inch off the stake pocket, and three and a half inches from here to here, from here to here, and measured 16 inches and made a step cut there. If you, if you'll leave just a little bit extra, and figure for the thick, thickness of your blade, people, if you'll leave a little extra this way, excuse me, this way on this side, and this way on this side, don't cut directly on your line, just cut a sixteenth or so to the inside. Same thing, if you cut a little bit this way on this one, and a little bit this way on this one, and then cut them when you butt your bed together, then your lines will be absolutely perfect and it'll be very easy to butt weld all this stuff. Hopefully I'll have some help here in a little bit that'll help with the filming and lifting and stuff and the film will get better. I apologize for the quality of the footage, but when you work for a living, you work with what you have. And this is what I have. We'll be back shortly. I'm gonna go ahead and film cutting the other side. I finally got some help to film for me.
Well, as you can see, it doesn't really create that much more work to go ahead and do the steps in it. By the time we get this line cut down the center, drill the holes, put this back together, it's probably cut half the welding out of this thing, just this front end. At this point, you're probably looking at this and going, oh Lord, what have I done? That's a huge gap. But it will pull in, it will line up. You just have to take your time. I've been working on the other side. You see how good these gaps lined up. And it took a little time to get that to line up. As you can see, our gaps are starting to close in and disappear. Some of them are a little wider than what I wanted. It happens. Best thing to do is not panic. Think through what you're doing. Just take your time. There's no ripples in this bed so far. A little bit of hammer and dolly work, not a lot. Most of it I haven't had to even touch a hammer to it. So, when you look at it and it looks like that, just don't panic. It will come together. Sometimes you may have to do a, a slit and modify a few things because of the stampings. Sometimes they'll come just slide right together. But we'll come back when we get this thing, this side, both these sides welded up. Oh, while well, I'm thinking about it, this is how the bed, inside the bed looks. See, there's no weld seam. We'll weld these plug holes, plug weld holes up And you'll never know that that bed was cut. Well, we've got to do a little bit of welding on the inside, but that's all the welding on the front, on the inside we have to do. Okay, guys, we're back. I've got this side line all lined up. You can see how nice that gap turned out. It actually turned out better than the other side. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. You do the best you can, like I said before, do the best you can to figure for the thickness of your blade. That throws off a lot of people's work. Here's the other side all welded in and ground. And I haven't even taken time yet to do any uh, dolly work with it, hammer and dolly. Top cleaned up very nice. There's no real dips to it. As it is right now, about a sixteenth of an inch or a body filler will actually fill that in. I see a few places here and there I need to get back with the welder and touch up where I see a few little tiny pinholes, but it's pretty close. As one of my favorite YouTubers says, good enough for the girls we date. Okay, good people, we got her finished up. Notice that there's little to no warping down the bed sides. I'll look, get a side, look down the side of it. See how straight that bed side is, the way I've cut this thing. And it didn't increase any time in the welding to do that. It took a, just a little bit more time in the cutting, but not much. You can see on the inside of the box here, there's no seam down the front of it like everybody else's. There's a slight seam right here that can be body worked out. Yes, there is a little rust in this bed and the owner said that they'd probably take care of that themselves. And then back here at the back where I've stepped it, and I got lucky. I, I usually don't cut them down the middle of the brace like that. Most of the time I cut them right here on this edge. It's a lot easier to weld it if you, if you got a good bed, but unfortunately this bed had rust just like these areas right here so we used the opportunity to remove the rust and took the four inches out over the brace there but we stepped it back on the sides to where we didn't work the sides up as you can see and it turned out turned out real nice see the tailgate fits good the only 
only issue we had with warping it was right here. And it warped it just a little bit. Not a lot, you can see a little bit of it there. But that's enough that a very, very thin skim of body filler. Sorry about all the traffic people, we are on the side of the highway up here. We'll take care of it. Now this side, it done very nice down through here. As you can tell, the truck bed wound up to be three eighths of an inch longer than stock, which closed the gap up behind the bed and made that look a whole lot better. But. Interesting to see what the customer's gonna do from, from here on out. I don't really know. But 